sort of heading into this next chapter of my life, I'm asking myself those questions. How can I, what can I do in these communities, right? To educate, to inspire, mm-hmm. to empower. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think in our society, you know, in my experience, what I've seen is that um, we're more prone to sell the cure as opposed to sell the, sol- you know, sell the solution, right? To like, for people to monetize on the solution as opposed to be proactive instead of reactive. If your heart's the most beautiful thing about you, then nothing else matters. Mic drop. I got an appetite, let's bake ourselves a treat. What you've been mixing, serve it up the way you please. I love the way you shake, you stir, you hear, you squeeze. So thick. Push up and butter me. What's up, guys? I'm Naisha Arrington. I am a chef, and I'm here on the Live Through Love podcast. We're going to talk about some amazing topics today. Food deserts, how to live through love. I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing, delicious dish rooted in love. You do a little CrossFit style training. Yeah. It's competitive. So you got that yeah. competitive nature in you. Yeah. So it's like, it's like sport, right? That's yes. the athlete in you. Performance. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I do really enjoy it. Um, I've been doing the CrossFit stuff, like, I don't know, maybe a year or so now. Um, but I grew up playing sports. Like I played softball, I played soccer, I was in martial arts. Mm. And, um, I think like my being is really rooted in like, systems and, and, and performance. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoy kind of that, like feeling that you get when you feel like you're like being your best self. Mm -hmm. And like, I think I'm ultimately trying to always have like my highest expression and that, that comes with even like a variables and, and varying degrees of like who that person is every day as like humans are pretty complex creatures, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm really digging the like fitness. I have to say like, you know, I've been pretty like athletic most of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really started to let some of that go once I started to cook professionally. Um, and there's been like a whole arc of journey in even that whole process of like finding self. Um, and I would say around 2019, just before the pandemic, I started to lean back in to like, but prioritizing fitness and prioritizing my health, prioritizing sleep and really, yes, cooking for fun and pleasure, but also truly understanding how food is affecting my body as fuel, Mm. you know, and what output that I'm emanating to the world. And like, am I being kind to myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you say that reconnecting with your physical being Obviously cooking is very physical, but is it made you more conscious on what you're consuming versus now what you're cooking or what you're sharing with the world? Cause that would be your love language, right? Yes. Cooking is 100% my love language. Mm-hmm. I, I would say Ruben, um, truly cooking like found me, you know, yes, I found cooking. I lean into it, but like I have a, I'm an artist. Like I, food is my medium of self-expression. Like, I grew up painting, sculpting. I experienced the world through texture, through vibes, like how, mm-hmm. for a lack of a better term to say that. And so like, I think food is that kind of common denominator of like humans where we can, you know, transcend the like physical form. You mm-hmm. know, it, it it's something that nurtures people, you know? It's medicine. It's, absolutely. It's something that lives in the soul, you know? And so food is my love language. And, you know, I think looking back on my life, um, I don't think there's any other real job, if you even want to call it that, um, that I would have been positioned to do. Mm. Like my grandfather was a cook in the Korean war, uh, met my grandmother there, brought her back to Los Angeles. And, you know, then they spawned another generation of people that were 
food food passionate. They spawned another um, you know generation of people that were passionate about food. And um, and my aunts cooked. I mean, I grew up in LA. All my aunties cooked. My mm-hmm. dad sides from Mississippi, born and raised in Los Angeles. And you know, the terroir that I draw my sort of creative expression from is very robust. You know, it's rooted in you know Mississippi side and also you know. California cuisine, LA food, you know, so it's, it's a never, it's an, it's a never ending like pursuit of, um, of creation. You know, food is that thing that can just always continue to evolve, which Mm. is cool. And, and why I'm so happy that it is my love language because I'm never bored of it. You know, I can always learn a new technique and, and, People are really just a conduit of that, right? When when someone when I get to cook with a new person in a new country or go visit somewhere, you know, it's I I get to be just a vessel of, of their life experience, and then that comes through me, and then I get to share that with someone else. And it's like I just I think that's really what like makes us human, you know, especially in the digital age when mm-hmm. we can like see some see a recipe and like I can create it, sure. And it's you know you hope that you can like convey that like love language through that right like i think a creative tries to put as much you know thought into creating that recipe so that that person can create it in their home and then put that on a dinner table and share those like stories and and you know create a new food memory i think that's Mm. really what makes food special so i'm really like grateful that i get to do that every day on so many different levels it's not just about going into a kitchen and making the food there's being a steward of the land, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and carrying on that legacy and that energy that the farmer, the artisan put into that, right. Even the soil, right. Is the soil alive and happy soil that creates the vegetables and all the things it's just like never ending. So, you know, I think that's really just, you know, even just from a cellular standpoint that like ignites us, you know, and makes us feel alive and feel good and continue to share that energy. You know, mm-hmm. it's a long winded way to say that. Oh, well, I love it. It's true. But you, already, you went all the way down to the soil <laughs> where it's coming from. But I love that you keep saying I'm an artist. Yeah. Right. Because most people look at me and like, oh, you're an artist. You paint murals and paintings. I'm like, a lot of us are artists. We're mm. all artists and we're all creatives. Mm. And we just do it in different ways. You're doing it with food. But also with, with food and the beautiful thing about like my wife and I were huge foodies. When we travel, we try to do local cooking classes just to experience it. We were in Morocco. We did a tagine. We were in Italy. And I remember in Siena. Oh, I love that city. Mm. We made pasta from scratch. And the, the father that taught us, his daughter translated because he didn't speak any English. Wow. And then we ate the food that we cooked later. It was just a beautiful thing. Gorgeous, right? And that'll live in your family's soul. And then you can share that with your children mm-hmm. and then they can share that story and it lives forever. Yeah. Like that's the beauty. It's in, it's, it's tangible, but intangible, you know, it's a necessity, but it's the ultimate connector. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone can relate to it. No matter what religion, race, you know, e- ethnic background, like beliefs, like it, it is the common denominator. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I'll throw on a little loophole right here. Dun, Not dun, a dun. loophole, but a little. Where does fast food play into all this? In what way? I mean, is it bad? Is it good? I don't eat fast food. Not because of anything in general. I grew up with McDonald's and all that. But to me, when I'm talking about food, I don't look at that really as as food the way that what we're talking about. And it's not to take away from it. But culturally, you hear about food deserts now. And there's places where people cannot go to a farmer's market. They, there's no Whole Foods or Sprouts or Trader Joe's. It's literally the 99 cent store or something equivalent with not the greatest kind of food. Yeah. So like as a food provider and cook, like how does that make you feel or do you see that that is a problem? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for that question. Um, how does fast food play into this? Wow. I mean, for me, I came up in French fine dining. When I went to culinary school, at that time, you know, they say, you know, classic French white tablecloth, high touch elite ingredients is the only way, right? That is mm-hmm. the best of the best. And I'm like, bet, like, got you. Like I'm, I'm two feet in, like 
jumped right in. I was like, that is my North star because Mm -hmm. if that's the best, like I want to crush that. I want to be the first everything at that, you know? And so I really looked down at my cutting board, my proverbial life cutting board and really set out to attain every skill possible to get there. Right. Learning technique, putting myself in the toughest kitchens, meaning, you know, the best kitchens, right. The most, um, intense, passionate, um, where nothing else mattered. We're just cooks. Like all we do is cooks, just a whole ass lifestyle, you know? And so, and I, um, and grateful for those formidable stages in my life, but I have to say, um, in tandem with that, you know, there's another dialogue at play of like culture and heritage. And, you know, I think as time went on, um, speaking to sort of my life journey lived thus far, um, you know, I think when you're on, when you're kind of living this human experience, you're like, you know, generally trying to understand what is the why, what is the purpose, right? Like, who am I? What do I want to emanate? Like, you know, ultimately. And so, being able to see this emerging uh, culture conversation come Mm -hmm. up outside of just European style cuisine, you know, especially in Los Angeles, other people having a seat at the table to have to share their cultures of food Mm -hmm. um, has been a conversation that has become only more robust. Right. So I say that in that, you know, I think especially being a, a POC person, right. A person of color, it's like, Yes, I grew up with fast food as well. I grew up with not being able to go to the farmer's market. You know, my parents still eat the same as they did growing up, you know, Mm -hmm. just not very, um, you know, worldly. My my parents don't have a passport. They never been out of the country, Mm -hmm. you know, but but I I have valued my my uh, upbringing so much because my dad is a very. A uh, universal thinker and and my best buddy and like my mom too, I, but like my dad is my best friend and you know my pursuit in excellence is really ultimately like what drives me is to be able to help explore you know with them and to provide new cool opportunities you know mm-hmm. and so and to just experience the world you know and I think ultimately as I want to do that with my per, my family you know, I would love to help do that in the food deserts, you know, because you see a lot more like my aunts, all of my aunts, all of my most, all of my aunts. And I still have some uncles around, but have passed, you know, all of my grandparents, mostly from heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, Mm. all of these issues within the body that are due to mucus, inflammation, you know, you name it. And so, that is a direct reflection of what we're putting in our bodies Mm -hmm. to fuel us to have maximum output essentially. And so, you know, back to my point about having purpose and, you know, retooling, what is my, you know, North star, right. Starting in those fine dining kitchens and working my way in and out of them. And now sort of heading into this next chapter of my life, I'm asking myself those questions. How can I, what can I do in these communities, right? To educate, to inspire, Mm -hmm. to empower. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think in our society, you know, in my experience, what I've seen is that um, we're more prone to sell the cure as opposed to sell the, you know, sell the solution, right. To like, for people to monetize on the solution as opposed to be proactive instead of reactive, you know? And so, you know, again, I'm not like perfect. I haven't lived my life perfect, but I would say, you know, I really want to help people and have people understand uh, how important it is to eat healthy, you mm-hmm. know? And I think, I think it's a, it's a dual, there's a duality in it, right? I think sometimes you can eat for pleasure and sometimes you can eat for fuel, you know? But I think what we see a lot of in the um, food deserts really is that, you know, it makes sense, right? Because a lot of times there's perceived value. It's like, am I going to schlep to the farmer's market and get these grapes for $20 in Santa Monica when I can go down the street and get, spend 20 bucks and feed my family of four, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like- It's a real conversation. It's a huge conversation, Ruben, a hundred percent. 
And so, you know, I've really been trying to find that access and those connection points to say like Naisha, what can you do to help bridge this gap? Right. And I've, and I'm actively having those conversations. Um, so yeah, I think it needs to happen on a few levels. It's kind of like making healthy eating cool. You know, I think it's not just about like wheat germ and like broccoli, like it could be delicious, you know, but I think it takes some empowering, some creative uh -huh. thought, you know, to your point about everyone being creative. I think that's really what, um, it's the educational piece, you know, and how is it marketed? You know, like I think fast food people, that whole world, you know, they are, they are, they're, they are actively researching and actively, you know, marketing so that it grabs the attention of people and say like, I need that, mm -hmm. you know? So how. I'll give you an example on that. This is a fascinating thing that I've always found interesting. Name four fast food places off the top of your head. Very easy. Name Taco them. Bell. That was my first job uh -huh. ever. Uh, Burger King's right down the street from my apartment. Uh, McDonald's. How do you not say that? Right. And. Um, and Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> what colors do they have in common? Red, yellow. Those that is Boom. science. And you know what they do? They stimulate appetite. And make you eat quicker to get you out of there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you think about healthy food, it's green generally. Right. And it's like that does not stimulate that. So, yeah, I feel you like I'm like trying to have this conversation, you know, because it's a it's a it's like a macro conversation. And it's also very micro in these food deserts, you mm -hmm. know, because why is there liquor stores on every freaking corner? You know, why is there access? Because it's like there's a business to sell this to sell the, the medicine. Yeah. Right. In, in big pharma. So I my fourth mural ever I was able to do in partnership with American Express and uh, Mr. Luckett, who's recently passed the mayor of Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh, and we painted on Morgan Freeman's Blues Club down there. So we went down to Clarksdale. I had never been to middle America. I, I've, I've born and raised in LA. I've been up both coasts. Yes, I've traveled, but I've never been to Clarksdale, Mississippi. And what we had to do was fly into Memphis and then drive because there's no direct route. Wow. Talk about eye opening. Wow. What was that experience like? I've never seen that. It, it was a little bit of both. It was very, very sad because mm. it's very run down and broken. Wow. Down. Empty buildings, no roofs, no nothing. Wow. Blocks of this. And the culture down there, you know, it's people of color. It's low income, <laughs> low education. And the project was about financial literacy. Mm. So as a previous finance guy, mm. now then painting murals, it kind mm. of brought those two worlds together. So it was really cool. Mm. And we got the high school kids to paint with us. And I did a project called, and it was goals and dreams. And I talked to them about what makes a dream a reality. And then they all kind of said what their dreams were. And I said, now you're going to paint those dreams on the mural. And they painted it on the wall. I'm like, now you made it a goal. Now you made it real. Cheers. And it was after, after that, me and my two buddies, we got together and we were just sobbing. I bet. And they put BMW and Army and Dennis and OBGYN and like, now you held it in truth. Now it's in reality. Now you're gonna make it come true. But what I experienced was, I love the Southern pecan beer, it was delicious. Mm. The fried green tomatoes, first time having that. Mm. But it was a lot of that heavy kind of food. Yes. And there was no market. We are like, how do we get snackies? I'm like, I need some snackies. Mm. <laughs> I had to drive, I don't know how far to a Walmart and that I could barely get some baby carrots and some hummus. Besides that, there's no salads. Salads are a garnish for everything to be on top. Salad of. is a lettuce on a cheeseburger. <laughs> but it, the culture, it was like Ground Zero Blues Club and the homes of the blues. And I saw this 92 year old man in a bar. It was all red, just playing all night long. Mm. And it was just so fascinating. Mm. He, you just saw how old he was. Wow. And then I saw this 16 year old kid called Big Fish, who's recently been blowing up since I, this was like 2017. Cool. He just Shout killed out to Big it. Fish. Big Fish? Crushed it. I'm like, oh my God. This, but you know, he was like the Big Fish. Okay. And, and again, it was to me, it's like that's middle America. It crushed me. And it was like, wow, I didn't know this. Like, how privileged am I mm. to be born and raised in LA? 
to live in Santa Monica, to have Sprouts and Trader Joe's be my normal. Right. Right. And it's right. like, how, how can we make that normal? And one of the things that you said earlier was, well, it's easier to take 20 bucks and feed a family of four fast food. And I mean, I had 20, 20 cheeseburgers on a Tuesday at McDonald's when I was growing up. It's 10 sure. bucks. But the other side of it, and we can cut and do all kinds of ways of cutting this argument, is what's your health worth after the fact? You know, like the doctor bills and the cancer and the insurance, but we don't think about we're going to be 50, 60, 70. So my wife, she does all the home ordering. It's, everything's organic. Everything. I'm like, what are these? Because it's expensive. I'm yeah. like, we can get this meat or we can get this meat. You know, luckily we can get this meat, but she's like, hey, it's cheaper than the doctor. And like, this is what we're going to feed our kid. And this is what we're going to move forward with. But it, it's, it comes to education. It comes to, you're a doctor. You're a doctor of food and that's your medicine. Absolutely. Like, how do we move this conversation forward? But also realize that there's all this societal pressure. There's Man. all this stigma. There's, I mean, racism takes a role. Our cultures of where we come come take a role. I think it's just having more conversations. It really is. And this feels really good, you know, because even just having this platform and and being able to share this space with you today, it's it's putting a lot of my inner um, thoughts at ease because I'm saying them out loud with you right now, mm -hmm. you know, because I'll, I'm self, I'll say like, I'm an empath, you know, I feel energy. I feel, I feel the world, you know? And, um, you know, I think helping people find solutions is ultimately going to help selfishly me navigate those things, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like, I want to be able to share my craft with the people not just the people who can fly in from, you know, the coast of Italy to come, yeah. you know, whatever. And I do those dinners, you know? And so it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it's true. It's, it's having the conversations, it's empowering people to, to make the choices, you know, and showing people how that $20 can stretch, you know, deliciously, right. Being realistic about it also, mm -hmm. right? And, and empowering people to not think. It's kind of a restructure of mind frame also, because I think a lot of people, especially in the black community, I, it's my community, you know, I mean, it's it's a generational, uh, maybe trauma a bit, you know, like, mm -hmm. and, and also a celebration of cuisine. But a lot of the cuisine that is identifiable is kind of based in that Southern realm of cooking, you know, the fried chicken, the, the pork, ridden collard greens you know and and those things and that even comes from the days of slavery and and the yard birds you know and and frying the the chicken and and breaking down and, and sharing that with you know as many people as possible mm -hmm. um and so you know i think it's reframing that and and getting people to think that that's not just for those people over there in santa monica mm -hmm. or wherever right um and it's also, I mean, I love fried chicken. Same. <laughs> uh, well, honey and hot sauce. Same. Oh, I love it. Same. But it's it's not saying we can't eat those things. Yeah. And we can't visit and celebrate what led us here. But it's like, how do we amplify that? How do we extend it? How do we open it up so that we're eating a lot of different things? Right. And, I, and to your point, you know, that's 1000% fact because it's like, you know, I think it is a healthy balance between food as fuel and food as pleasure, right? Because mm -hmm. when you eat that salty, delicious crunch, there's nothing freaking better. No. But it's like, what oils are you using, right? Are you using oils that are ultimately carcinogenic, mm -hmm. right? And or not, you know, and it's like, it comes down to the data and, and empowering people to have that educational piece too. Yeah. yeah. So let's simplify it. How do we make... $20, a simple meal. So a lot of people say, I can't cook. So what are a couple ingredients or what's a couple tips that someone can say, this is what you can do. Now you can cook a meal and you can enjoy this. Yeah. And you don't have to be an expert. Thank you for that question. You know, what I have to say and what works for me is cooking in volume. I mm -hmm. think even as a professional avid cook and chef, like, you know, I'd be not telling the truth if it i would say that it's not an arduous task to to organize your thoughts to go procure the ingredients prep them you know cook the cook them clean the dishes eat the meal like it's a it's a big undertaking mm -hmm. right so if you're going to do those things 
for me, I like to cook in volume and think ahead and maybe cook for a few days. And what can I cook one time, but it lasts a few days. And mm-hmm. so my process around that is, you know, for example, chickpeas, right? Great protein, clean. I'll stew a pot of chickpeas and one day I might chop up some collard greens and add that in. The next day I might puree them and make a quick little hummus, right? Mm. The next day I might add in some short rib or, you know, short rib used to be really cheap. It's expensive these days, but my point being an inexpensive cut of meat, maybe instead of, you know, it's a weekday. I'm not like it's Sunday. I'm going to have my bomb fried chicken. I'm like, I'm going to get these chicken thighs, sear them off put the chickpeas in, add some water and braise that. Mm. I have a whole dinner now, right? Yeah. But a lot of that legwork has been taken off on the front end. So I'd have to say it's about buying ingredients that are cost effective. Beans are great for that. They're a great source of protein and, and they're, you know, a fairly clean food that can go a long way. Mm-hmm. So even lentils, you know, and just, or black eyed peas, whatever, but point being that making in volume and then throughout the week, splitting some off and just, you know, making it flavored. A yeah, exactly. Too. A little yeah. remix. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you believe that there's a perfect food? <laughs> Interesting. No. Um, I would say, okay. I, I think this, I mean, having, and this is like, uh, I'm sort of in, uh, going down a rabbit hole of this, of understanding, um, even my body, right. And the genetics and, and how it's made up. And I've, done all kinds of things of like, how do I eat for my blood type? Um, you know, all the little data collecting things that they do. What are my food sensitivities? Like, and so I think it's per the person, like what Mm, is the perfect food, right? Like ultimately. Um, but I think, yeah, it's based on genetic makeup. Like, you know, where are you regionally? Um, but I would say overall, I would say that it's, it's fairly important uh, from like a, a vibe, like energy standpoint to eat foods that have electricity, that have high alkalinity. Mm. You know, I think, you know, when we can eat foods that are that have life in them. Right. Uh, that transcends into your body mm-hmm. and fuels you on more ways than just I'm not hungry anymore. Yeah. Right. It's creating that neuroplasticity. It is you feel good, you know, and, and that even in itself, you know, maybe you have a smile on your face a little bit more and then you hold the door open for someone and you made that person's day, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's a small ripple and a big wave, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that that journey is per the person, but I would say the ultimately, yeah, eating foods that have some energy in them is important. Sourcing. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Because, as far as per people always like, what's the magic diet? Yes. What's this? There's so many yo-yo diets, but anything you eat on a daily basis, that's your diet. Yes. What they're really talking about is what's your nutrition plan. Yes. And some people, eggs are amazing for many people, terrible for some people. Yes. Dairy affects most people. It doesn't affect a lot of people, so on and so forth. Yes. So knowing what you should and shouldn't be eating is a sole responsibility. Totally. Totally. And it's like also the genetic makeup. Like, are you eating foods from where your ancestors came from? Like, ultimately that's going to like affect your body one way to Mm. what sparked that thought was the dairy thing. Like if you, you know, yeah, most people, it doesn't react well in the body. And like some people, you know, in different countries, like it does, you know? So it's, it's, it's all, it's all very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the 357,000 types of milk we have now? Well, what an emerging, uh, what CPG, um, bland. Yeah. Uh, what are my thoughts? Uh, I kind of toggle between oat and almond myself. Uh, I might do a cashew here and there. Um, uh, but on a daily basis, I've gone down it, down the pipeline on it. Um, during the pandemic, I was making my own milks, you know, um, and having some, uh, successes and failures around that because, um, it can get really viscous very mm-hmm. quickly if you don't, you know, have the right processors. Um, but I'm generally not like a, a milk drinker. Um, I'll have some cheese and stuff here and there. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely conscious about how much dairy I consume personally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The end. <laughs> I just, I laugh about it all the time. Cause there's always a new milk coming out. I'm like, is it really milk? I know. 
You know, yeah. there's milk and then there's milk alternatives, but it, you can't really milk alternative. Yeah. No, you call it milk. Yeah. You I just spill think it it's funny. Wine. There's so many. Before I know, I was like, oat milk, when did oat milk happen? Then Oatly's been around forever. And now they're having a capital issue. And, and then, so I think Silk came in and just superseded them from the market when they were first. The, I, I read a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. So my favorite question. Yes. This is where the meat and potatoes of this is. Okay. How do you live through love? How do I live through love? Well, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think that ultimately what I've learned, I'll be 40 this year <laughs> in my 39 years on the planet, uh, lived thus far is that first of all, I think self love is very important mm -hmm. so that you can share that with others. And I also think that finding a craft that you love to do is very important in nurturing that as well. I would say for me, I live through love through my cooking. I mean, it's the thing that I love to do the most because it's the most fulfilling to me. And it's also a conduit of love to feed another, mm -hmm. you know, the first time I felt in my being what love tastes like was through my grandmother. And I can remember the day, you know, I mean, her being a Korean immigrant was interesting to me as a kid in its own, you know, because I mean, I have brown skin, my parents do. And to have this woman from Korea who spoke a different language as her first language to go to her home was like stepping into a different country. And I remember that as a kid being so fascinating, you know? And so I remember when she taught me how to use chopsticks or taught me, you know, eating octopus or spicy foods, it, it, it was, it was electric to me, you know? And and when she would, she was the first person to bring me in the kitchen, you know? And I've said that story, I've said that out loud many times because it was truly so impactful. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the first emotion where I was like, I feel this, like as a kid where, you know, like, you don't know, your parents are like trying to help you be a human, you know? I think it was the first time standing on my own two feet and I had my, my first uh, emotion that I could remember. And that was love. And that was through the food that my grandmother fed me, you know? And, and that is, a beautiful thing because I imagine that she loved me so much that she's like, I want to make this dish that nurtures my granddaughter. And I felt it and it was received, you know? So being able to have that moment of reflection is what drives my spirit to evoke that emotion in other people. Mm. Now say that in one sentence. Okay. Um, what I have to say the way that I live, the way that I live love through food. Is that the word? How do you live through love or how do you define living through love? There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. I just want you to be like, what's your hook point? Yeah. I love the stories. No, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm just sitting there. I'm Colombian. I'm Colombian nine generations, but you're like, I went back and went to Korea and saw this. Like when I went back to Ethiopia, where my wife came from that she had no recollection of. Wow was like eye-opening. So wow, I, really I bet. Relate to that. Mm. Oh, it's so powerful. My heart just tingled. <laughs> um, I mean, how I live my highest expression of love through life is ultimately through cooking. It's my highest form. And my grandmother was the first person to introduce that emotion to me. So it is the way that I choose to live my life. And I want to touch as many people as possible through that. From here... We are going to cook an amazing meal. I'm calling it the live through love meal. You're going to cook us up some love and we're going to show that. And for our audio listeners, this is where you're going to need to tune into YouTube to really check out what's about to happen. So you ready to take us to cooking school? Yes. I'm very excited. Awesome. Dang! Like, it's pretty good. Any, any tips and tricks? Keep garlic to parsley, cilantro ratio, chili? It's, 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 it's just my, it's just the love that I put into the chimney. Boom! It's just the love that I put into it. Like, so on brand. Like, sorry, I don't, I'm, it's a chimney. Can I talk? Can I talk right yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, Ben, did you meet Ben? My friend, he's an English guy who um, started a rum brand. I, I thought maybe I thought maybe you met yeah, him. There he is.
but yeah. I think so. So, okay, so during the pandemic, Ben goes, let's do a chimmy off. I go, okay. Not no, he doesn't know that I like to make chimmy and I've made chimmy before. Yes. And so he's got the blender. Yes. He's blending his chimmy and I, and I, and, and which, which is like, you, I mean, for me, you don't do that. Yeah. You don't, you, you don't, you don't, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's and so, so I'm, I'm chopping up the parsley. I'm chopping up the, the garlic. I've got this organic, you know, red wine, red wine vinegar. And then I've got the, the specific salt and pepper. And then I do a, um, a whole, a, a whole red chili and a half. Okay. And then a little bit of chili flakes as well. So there's just like this nice sweet spice oh, yes. to it. And he goes, I'm never making chimmy again mm -hmm. <laughs> after, after he dropped. <laughs> so we have something called ahi. Yes. Uh, Peru has it. Orange Columbia chili. Has it. So we have uh, the Peruvian ones, orange chili, but our ahi is more like cilantro, tomato, all that. Ah. But if you really want to make it spicy, you could blend it and then it's a liquid version of it. But I like it chunky. So it's almost like a pico de gallo, but my Colombian version of a pico de gallo. Yes. We call it ahi. Love it. But the Peruvian ahi is the little orange ahi chili, but that knocks you in your butt. It really does. I have some in my freezer um, that I brought back and snuck when I went to Peru. So delicious. Mm -hmm. It's like a floral citrusy chili vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Put on your alpaca. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Yep. But you gotta cook alpaca right. Or, yeah, it's, it's very true. I tried cuy there for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those that don't know, that is guinea pig. <laughs> And it's delicious. Yes, you really got to know how to cook that. Basically, we had it fried, basically. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm just gonna prep my little ingredients. Um, you know, I just, you know, this isn't a dish that I necessarily made before. I like to just cook, basically, with what we have. You know, today we, meal. exactly. So today we have some serrano chilies, love a little bit of spice. It's one of my favorite chilies. Shallots, I'm a big fan. Um, I also love, you know, this is sort of the, um, you know, um, can't think of the word. What's the onion family, Gabe? The onion family? Yeah. Cold. Oh. Mm. Like garlic, onion, Leeks, Green onions, shallots, leeks. Onion, yeah, shallot, yeah. I can't think of the name. Leeks, My brain is um, in the middle. Right? Is, is fennel a part of that? No, no, fennel is not, but um, it'll come to me. Fennel is like a cabbage onion. Brassicas. I love, I love fennel. Oh, Same. So, um, yeah, so. You're saying like the crustacean or the fungi, there's a there's a name. A class, a genus, a species. You know what, we should look this up. Yeah. What is this? Um, Alliums. Alliums. Yes. So, yeah, right? It's all to, oh yeah, all alliums. <laughs> I've heard that before, but I would never remember that. <laughs> so allium, I have an allium. The genus is allium. The family's Alienus aliasea. The order Asparagalis. The class Liliopsida. Mm. Kingdom planted. That was in your notes section on your phone, right? Google. Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today our alliums uh, are some garlic, um, shallots. I love the I love to use shallots a little bit sweeter um, than an onion. Um, yeah, and then we're using this beautiful fish that you brought from Alaska. Yeah. Any story we have behind that? Uh, 2017. I believe this isn't from 2017. <laughs> this batch, but in 2017. Still year one meeting Z. She's like, want to come to Alaska, meet my family. And like, we went up there, we spent about a week and a half. And part of the trip, we drove around different areas. Yes. We went to Homer. Okay. I've never done halibut fishing. Like, want to go halibut fishing. Up at like 4 a.m., we're out there. Put the, okay, ready, we hook a fish. You literally stick it right here on your pelvis and yes. hold it. And you are just cranking and cranking. It's only like a 46 pound fish, but it felt like a, I was pulling out a dinosaur. Sure. The bruise that I had here, and he was telling me that's a baby one. There's people that pull out 200 pounds. I'm like, I can't imagine. I work out and I know I'm pretty strong and I couldn't imagine pulling out a 200 pound fish. Wow. But this was, my father-in-law caught this recently shipped it down. He said it'd be at Alaska Airlines. We go pick it up at the airport. 
And today we're here with Amazing. Oh, that's what the love is in this dish. And it's so, I mean, I say that in my last restaurant that I had in Venice um, at Free Shift, we'd always, uh, you know, have a free meeting before dinner service and we'd go around and if there was a new dish or we'd do essentially a featured dish of the day and we'd go around and, I, and I'd ask, what is the love in this dish? And everyone would respond what the love was for that for them in the dish. Oh, yep. And so, I mean, to this day, you know, I mean, I made some lifelong friends in that restaurant. It was really rooted in love. And um, yeah, we always asked what the love was in the dish and, and then they would explain what the love was um, to the guests. And it's just really special. So um, that's amazing that we can carry on that legacy, the family mm -hmm. legacy. So speaking of restaurants. Yes. Do you do well, mostly private catering now? Um, so what do I do? You know, I actually need to come up with a term for what it is I do because I'm very unconventional in my approach of chefing. Um, I do what I, yeah, I like that, chef shaman. <laughs> Um, I do a lot. It's, there's very, there's different buckets, you know, being myself as a sort of tree trunk of the creative, um, you know, sometimes my bucket is television and um, sometimes it's dinner experiences. Uh, for me, no, I don't have a restaurant, um, so to speak. So I, I definitely take um, the craft on the road, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it depends on where I'm at and, and what time of year it is. Uh, I've done dinners in Hong Kong, New Zealand, Israel. I'm doing one in Morocco next month. Um, so, you know, that's definitely my love language is being able to travel and connect with people firsthand through the food. Um, you know, yeah, sometimes it's TV, sometimes it's writing and being on a stage for my upcoming TED talk and talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the way that I approach cooking, um, it depends on the day really, you know, and I think that ultimately is um, really a, a form of self-expression in who I am and then these like branches that come off. You know, and um, you know, each bucket bucket gets filled up differently every day. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I've realized from traveling, and eating, and doing this, you don't have to speak the language. Yes. It's food, food's its own language. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, everyone speaks delicious. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. I say the way to a man's heart or a woman's heart through the stomach. No, oh, I love that. Yeah. It's a beautiful art form. And again, it's that real true access of like, you know, being a steward of the land or the ocean or, you know, plant king and the animal kingdom and homo sapiens being able to connect. You know, this is that, that access that connects us all. Yeah. So should I just stand here and be like the annoying guy at the end of the counter? Or do you want me to help you? I'm putting you to work, Ruben. Okay. Okay, I need some of these. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna cut things wrong. Okay. Pick these parsley leaves. Pick parsley. Oh, I could do Pick that. Pepper. I can do that. We're gonna make up a dish. So yeah, I mean, cooking's all about layering flavor, right? So generally, it starts with the aromatics. Today, the aromatics are chilies, garlic, um, some shallots, and so some scallions. That is a back end aromatic. We have our front end aromatics that generally get cooked or like coaxed out with flavor that you always want to add your salt in increments, right? So we never want to wait to the end to add the salt to the very end. You always want to layer the season, is layer that, in flavor. Is, flavor, layer in flavor. Is that, well, it's like warming up for a workout. You got to warm up. You don't just start with the wad. But is that why, because I sometimes, I'm quick, I throw this, if I do eggs or whatever, I throw the salt in at the end and you have, it feels like there's no salt and then you take that one bite and you're like, oh, there's all the salt. Exactly, right? As opposed to if it's a scrambled egg, you add the salt to the egg, beat it in so that it, it's evenly distributed throughout mm -hmm. the protein structure of the egg, right? Yeah, fascinating. And that's the beautiful thing about cooking. It's like, it's an art, it's a science, it's creativity, it's chemistry. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into um, what you do? So I've been an artist my entire life, but in our generation, no one says go be an artist. They say go be a doctor, a banker, a 
finance guy, a lawyer. Sure. So I went to school to be a doctor. I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon. So I got degrees in all that stuff. Yes. Then I took the scenic route, right? I ended up in real estate. Yes, they keep telling me you're really good at what you do. Like, you're one of the top talents. You can make millions. I'm like, yeah, but hey, I don't care if I'm going to make millions. I would see my clients miserable and unhappy. And I'm like, what if I'm, I wasn't married at the time. I didn't even have a girlfriend at the time. Like, what if one day my wife and I are enemies, we're divorced, my kids resent me, and all I really had to show for is like, well, I gave you all this money because I did really well, but I was a miserable asshole yeah. because I hated every bit of it. Yeah. So five years into that, a buddy's like, hey man, come get coffee, I'm doing this thing. I'd love to share it with you. It was like, right place, right time, signed up. It's an emotional intelligence workshop. Went through the whole thing, did all this stuff. And by the time we were graduating, the community service project was a mural. And it became a mural because a buddy of mine saw me sketching the team hoodie. Because every time you graduate, your whole team gets a hoodie. And he's like, that needs to go on a wall. I'm like, what do you mean, a mural? Like, yeah. So that became a mural. And he, at the time, was kind of running up and down the streets trying to beautify it with painting murals. So it became the mural. We enrolled everyone. Actually, the next few leadership classes ended up doing their own projects as well. And then for the next three years, I was trying to figure out what would it look like to be an artist? How am I going to make money? So I started sabotaging the finance business. Sure. By not Consciously or subconsciously? Both. It was conscious because I knew if I continued to succeed at it, why would I leave? Sure. Uh, subconscious a little bit as well, but also because it had to be strategic. I didn't leave any of my clients high and dry. Yes. I'm very loyal. It's yes. like, how do I transition out? What I sabotaged was making more money. Yes. So I just stopped getting referrals and clients. I'm like, if I'm not bringing in more money, I'm going to have to figure this out. Did a couple art projects for like GT's kombucha. They're like, paint the kombucha bottle 40 feet tall. I'm like, oh, okay, I can make some money doing art. I didn't know what my brand was or anything. What year is this? This was 2015, 16, 17, 2018. I finally left after doing a, you know, every year I did a little bit more murals. Yes. And my quote unquote free murals were the ones that became this whole live through love thing. Yes. And one day I said, I'm not going to the office anymore. I'm done. And then this just kind of took off. Wow. But that first mural, uh, there, this across the street, Pier and Lincoln, there's a Santa Monica, uh, Starbucks, I mean. That used to be a cardio bar. I remember. It's right by Deuce. There was a mural on it with a ton of words. Yep. So that's the first mural. And on the left, it says, who will you be? Yes. And the whole conversation between that mural is me telling myself, well, I could be all the things I was thinking, an unworthy, depressed, a victim or whatever, or I can look at this, who will I be and choose gratitude, love, responsibility, leader, and go take charge of my life. And I figured if I'm having these conversations, someone else needs to see this on the wall. And that, that from day one, the message has always been there, but it took until 2019 to really be like, oh, this is live through love. Oh, this is the thing. So I've been doing it for years with the unknown. And that's the beautiful thing about just figuring it out. Like your whole journey, now where you're at, you're like, chef shaman. Who knows where that's gonna go? You know what I mean? And like, that's the stuff that truly speaks to me, honestly. Wagyu and truffles and foie gras all day and like feed all these like important people. But it's like, awesome. Like, how are you self-fulfilling? You know, and how are you making an impact on the globe? Yeah. And what lives are you changing that truly don't have access, right? So like, those are, when you say, like, hearing your story, I am like have these chills because it's like, it's speaking to me too, you know, because you, are in your craft, it's your career, but like, how is it also, you know, how do you channel that and then make an impact, you mm -hmm. know, more so that lives, that's bigger than yourself, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's just, I have to do this. Yes, yes. And it's the impact that, you know, some of the feedback I get, I painted a mural. So in 2018, when I took the leap, uh, I did a project in San Antonio. I had no idea what I was going to paint. I ended up painting a mural that said, you belong here. But I painted it for myself, telling me that I belong here as an artist. The majority of the people that lived there and saw it and visited, painted it and said, I belong here and I, I demand a life. Because some people, they messaged me like, Ruben, I didn't kill myself today because of a mural. And that, that kind of messaging is what always shakes me. 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's pretty to take an Instagram photo and do your thing, but when you take it to that next level and apply it, and you're like, oh, I'm shifting how I'm operating because of this artwork. So that's why I say I have to do this. Yes. Yes. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. It's powerful. You ask, I share. I'm just gonna chop these collard greens down. I chose collard greens today. Um, they're very rich in vitamin A and C. Um, dark leafy greens are super nutritious. Um, and I'm just going to make a little broth, like a beautiful, uh, flavorful sort of rich broth mm -hmm. for these greens to be braised in and just kind of let the fish speak. You know, I think when you're working with great ingredients, you really don't have to do a ton to them. And, you know, we spoke a little bit earlier on like braising and cooking in large format, you know, soups and stocks and sauces mm -hmm. before the pandemic, when things shut down. I, the, the last public dinner I did was in Seattle and it was the first dinner that I did um, that was based on, you know, I think as an artist or, you know, as a person, you know, we're always kind of trying to discover, you know, have self-discovery, I suppose. And for me, you know, I've always kind of asked and been on this journey of like, who am I? Like, what do I want to share with the world? Who, what is my food? And more so I would say other people ask me that. What is your food? What do you cook? You know, and I've always just been inspired by like, where am I? Who am I with? What season are we in, right? And uh, that dinner that I did was the, first dinner that I did based in a new realm of thinking. And it was like thinking about truly my heritage. So what first did, what, what, hello. Um, what the thought was around that was I did these oxtail dumplings. So it was like my mm -hmm. Korean side and my African American side in one, mm -hmm. which was amazing. And people were super stoked about it, but um, Tarn Roses and some oxtail dumplings. Do they? Oh, I haven't been there in forever. Oh, you got it. Let's go. I'm down. Super Andrew's down. a homie. He's great. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super down. This is my brain at work. I'm needing to see all the things. <laughs> see my. Special guest. Oh my goodness, I'm not Hi. 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 Ay, ay, ay. Hey, smoked it. Getting there. Are we cooking the love? Always. We're just having combos. Beautiful things. Yes. Yeah, so that was the um, last public dinner I did, and it was based on the idea of um, Afro Korean cuisine, which is something that I haven't actually necessarily cooked. That's your next book. Yeah. <laughs> And so I think, you know, it's just taking some time to like understand that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. possibilities are endless. There's also the great genetics of both black and Korean. Talk about black don't crack, black <laughs> Korean. Woo wee! <laughs> Can't mummify me. We'll probably edit that out, but who knows? Yeah. I'm just gonna cook all this and we'll eat it, right? I brought it all because, I mean, there's food. I was expecting everyone to eat. Yeah. There's a hundred of us. I know, that's the thing. It's like, always like, don't need to cook for a hundred. Even for myself, I'm like, always cooking for like, passing it out to the neighbors. See, I cook, I don't cook a lot of volume. I used to cook more in volume, but it's just because I, I cook. My breakfast is basically the same. Yeah. We'll we cook dinner and we, 
Breakfast is two eggs, four egg whites, three slices of Ezekiel toast. Yeah. And my strong coffee. Yeah. And uh, lunch is kind of, I go home, it could be ground turkey, sweet potatoes, because I, I just need to make sure I eat enough. Just some fuel, yeah. And then dinner could be, half the time my dinner carb is really a half bottle of wine. But when I go to town, I don't go to town a lot, but when I go to town, I put it. Let me think of what I'm going to do today. Do you have, oh, it, when you cook, do you have a um, favorite dish that you enjoy to eat? Or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Yeah, same here. People always ask me that question. I'm like, yeah, it depends on. So many variables. I mean, if I really had to answer, I'd be like pizza. But, sure. You know. It depends where I'm at. My favorite food in Morocco is a tagine. If mm. I'm in Italy, it's all of it. If I'm in, you know, it depends where I'm at. Sure. Makes sense. I hope you're hungry. I brought some, uh, a little bit of mustard green for my little garden, some chives, parsley. So there's yeah. tons of love. This is all like very, white white. they aren't the best knife cuts, so like. Don't, sure they... don't show them off. <laughs> no, because this knife's not sharp. So I'm trying to. Yeah, exactly. No, because I'll be like, I'm the, I die. Like back here, and you just pull it up, ready to go. Yeah, mine are packed away, ready to go to New York. And... Someone's gonna really judge you by them knife cuts. It's gonna be me. It's gonna break my heart. <laughs> That's how meticulous my brain is. Ooh, I like, yeah, that's a good way to say that. Go through the fast food chain. Yeah, then that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, not too far off. One of these. The one Dave, you want? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Your break ends, baby. Chase, you need to cancel your plans. <laughs> you need to stop, you need to stop making down. plans right after our, our session. We need to get better at financing. That's what we really need to do. Yeah. Actually, no, today would have been perfect, but the whole family decided, like, no, y'all come down so we're doing it. We'll do dinner down here instead of like, the whole evening just playing up here. I'm like, cool, and that's not even like a like, three hour trip on here. The most chefy thing. Should yeah. Uh, yeah, that's you. But I'm watching Travis. It's better to be. That's not, no, yours is over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Oh, nice. It's better not to be until It's saying 40 minutes to get home. Salud. Salud. Cheers. Nazarovia. Salud. 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 Thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Hopefully. Chalet. Gabriel Ormel. Hopefully I'll be able to Chateau Gabriel. partake in the uh, experiencing of the meal. Yes. Yeah. It's great to see how it comes together. It's also nice to enjoy That's it. Part of it. Right? It's breaking bread. 100%. So because only one piece has skin, are you audibling that? I am, I am. Um, because this one has scales, so I don't have my scaler. Mm. So I'm going to um, create, you know, just sort of Everything can be synonymous. I've really been wanting to invest in a knife. Yeah. And I'm always buying new knives because Z destroys them. <laughs> How so? Just chops it on everything. Right. So it's like, I'm not gonna go buy this. We had a really nice one. It's just like chipped and ch I'm like. Yeah, the German steel is pretty a harder steel, and the Japanese knives tend to be a little bit softer and um, chip easier. Most of my knives are Japanese, but depending on what I'm cutting. Hattori Hanso. What is that from again? Kill Bill. Oh, Kill Bill, it's so good. I just watched it the I, other day. I love that, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. There's oh, rumors that he was deciding if he makes another one. Really? But Because he's he's got one final movie he's gonna make. He's making uh, 10 movies. Wow, that's his thing, right? All those movies are supposed to be like, yeah. some kind of- So he's trying to figure out right? what he wants wow. that final movie to be. He doesn't know yet. But he is doing a TV show. And I forgot oh, the wow. show, but now he's, mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting. 
And that won't count toward his final movie. Sure. I'm new. Here, just put it, just put it on this if you, if you don't mind. No, no, you're good. It's my first time ever holding a phone. Yeah. You'll get used to it. <laughs> That's what they keep telling me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this thing's gonna take off though. It'll become appendage. Can you get an implant? <laughs> Where, what side of town do you live on? Uh, West Hollywood. Uh, oh, West Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Literally all this changed about three hours ago. You guys just stuck out here and said, I mean, listen, it's beautiful down there, but it's, that's that's going to be a trap. But it wasn't the plan. I was waiting for you. I have another glass for my wife. Oh, he's, he's, he's here. I just said, I just said, I'm not He's like, listen, guys. Wait, I have a question, so let's not. Um, question. So one of the reasons I don't cook a lot of fish. Yes. Because it stinks. And it's like on my hands, and I just don't, if I don't like touching the texture, I love eating it, yes. I love sushi and all that, but me personally, is that a normal thing? Did you find that common, or are you, does it just not affect you, you don't care? Um, it doesn't affect me, and I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I... Because I hear it's pretty common. Yeah, no, I think it's because I've, yeah, I probably had a thousands and thousands of fish throughout my career. So it's become definitely second nature. The beautiful thing for me when I'm working with fish is really seeing the characteristic of the fish because every single fish is different, you know? I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, so it's interesting. So don't let the stinky fish affect you. No. Because it honestly, that's one of the main reasons we don't eat way more fish. Yeah. If you have some, I'll reimburse you. I don't have any before. Oh, you want to do? Definitely one of those was good. The first time seeing fried power grains. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no more than stew. Yeah, today this is what we're going to do. See that technique? That's some other options for us. Oh man. I, I just, um, I was, I was, I was traveling, so I like, my friend cleaned me out of here, and I need to, like a good friend of I need to read. You know, Ben eats everything. Wow. Uh, so, and, there is nothing he won't eat. Yeah, so I'm just gonna sort of get put the greens on high heat and then just let them cook down. Because greens are collard greens are one of those greens that are tougher, right? So it takes some time to break down those fibers inside the green. So I'm just going to allow them to sort of cook on the back burner while we stir the fish. There was a place, yeah, Bear Burger on Main Street. Yes. They used to wrap yeah, their, it's, their it's lettuce wrap was collard green. I remember And I was that. always like, I know. I, wow, I'm really working at getting this. Oh my gosh, I haven't thought about Bear Burger Steak and Bong Bong three or four years yeah. now, roughly. Yeah. Cool. A great couple of moments. Yeah. Yeah. They went back to yeah. the East Coast. Okay. Here. I had a mural on the back of this. It began with gratitude. Really? Smooth. Okay. Friday afternoon, we should, we should, we should all be doing something. Why not? Just, just don't play Laguna in the, in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Versions are on their own time. Oh, uh, okay. Just gonna use every single pan possible. <laughs> you, got, you got the socks though, right? Because that's the, you know, you know. <laughs> Aisha's known for like the really good socks. So it's like, it's like important, you gotta get that. <laughs>
She always has good socks. I, I kinda, it's, it's kind of like I'm over here, you have good socks on. Good to see you. Yeah, have a great dinner. Thank you so much. Yeah. Joseph, thank you so much. See you, bro. I'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. I'm just gonna transfer these so I can cook the fish. Just don't go down Big bar can. Pardon me? I apologize for not having a pair of makeup waiting. I managed today. Okay, it was five something. Simple. Very simple dish. All right, searing the fish time. Buddy, we're going to sear the fish now. Exciting. Get that heat so up. So I cook by like feel. I don't yes. really use recipes. Yes. Because like when we go do things with her family, Every family within the family has like a breakfast and a dinner. Yes. So when I cook, they all cook by recipe. Like they come with their cookbooks, their recipes, everything. And every time I cook, they're like, I need the recipe. I'm like, I just make it up. No, I hear you. So what am I go to for like, if, if you're like, hey, you need to feed 10 people, it's picadillo. Okay. It's a Colombian dish, which yes. is basically ground beef, stewed tomatoes, spices, chopped onions, and you serve it with like black beans and rice. Oh. Forget about it. We do some green olives in there too. Chop it off to give it that extra little. What else you put in there? <laughs> Love, of course. Huh? Love, yeah. <laughs> but we got, we're in the danger zone. Dun dun dun. Yeah. You know the Kenley. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Well, that's like the one that's the visually, so it's like fish, like when do you know, how long do you know? Because like, there's the this many minutes, but sometimes it's not too long or too little. And that's the thing about cooking, right? Like recipes are generally a guideline because to your point, you know, the pan makeup that you have versus what I have is completely different, right? Your oven might be calibrated different than mine. The humidity mm -hmm. in the air might be different. The fish today might have more water content than yesterday. There's so many variables when creating. Um, it's really important to be aware of the product, right? And just cook visually in it, you know? It's, it's interesting because it's like you almost want to say, you know, cook till when it's done. And it's like, you know. But when is it done? Sorry? But when is it done, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'll tell you this, it's much harder cooking while holding him. <laughs> Your turn, buddy. Wanna capture it? You just want to look and yeah. catch it. You should show her what she oh, looks like. She's looking good. You got a whole vibe going. Better than Me? Oh, excellent. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I was like, let me braid up my hair because. That's the funny thing about TV. It's like, this is what it's supposed to look like, so we're going to make you look like this. Yeah, it's so true. Like, TV's great, but it's definitely a means to an end. You know, like, I'm doing it. It's fun. I'm learning and enjoying it, but I want to develop my own stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah, all the above, like all the things. What we've been doing recently is a lot of BuzzFeed videos. Oh, okay. Like, and we've been doing a lot of cooking segments. Yeah, just right. just plain, no talking. Yes. Just people cooking different recipes. It's freaking huge. It's a huge market in Japan and also in like Korea. Like and the like, stand and stir stuff? Just like, yeah, no, all we do is just, you know, sit there and just film. People just chopping things, cooking things. Yes. Crazy. That's amazing. By we, it's like you and a team or? Yeah, I have my own production company where I just shoot like, different things. Oh, nice. Mm. 
So I want to start with the larger portions of fish because obviously they take longer to cook. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way for me to not have to like be in and out of the pan and everything can sort of cook at the same time. If I start the thicker pieces first, I can just add the shorter, the thinner pieces on the back end and everything will be done at the same time. Yeah. Number two. We'll, we'll need to write down the recipe for the people. Yeah, so they can make the love recipe. And we'll challenge them. Cook it, tag us, show us. Smart. I know you don't have to fly it in from Alaska. <laughs> We're just blessed. Right? Essentially, when it when it when it moves, but I don't want to get too much color on this fish. It's so lean and, but rich at the same time. It's beautiful. Favorite days? Oh my god. Uh, Especially when you're like, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> clad uh, thing yeah. yeah well I didn't even know I got invited by a guy that I've known for a while but he didn't tell me what was going on he just okay. said hey come to this event okay. and so I show up and there was a there was a dinner I didn't realize there was a dinner but um, I went to look at her Instagram yes. and she was following me and so I go up to her and I was like she's like I follow you she was like Hey, um, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, she goes, don't worry, it was only like four weeks ago that I started, that I started following you, it wasn't like that long. 
But she's so sweet. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. I wanna, I, I wanna chat with her more. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So you, you were the next one, right? On the, yeah, yeah, awesome. I, I saw some clips, but I didn't, I didn't see the whole, the whole thing. She showed it. Yeah, no, she's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And she was so um, easily receptive of the uh, constructive criticism yeah. that times when she needed to be led. Yeah. And, and she fucking killed it. She yeah. brought it and won the whole show. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I really liked her a lot. Yeah. And her message is beautiful, you know? I, I, I really... She did a whole ceremony before the dinner. The, same, yeah. the other night. It was, it was awesome. It was really cool. Um, I think, and I think it's important, you know, I mean, so, so the indi I, I don't know much about the indigenous community uh, here, here in, you know, in the U.S. And, you know, I, I want to, like I said, I was like, any way we can help you guys, you know, to, like, help you out too, like, bring your message to more people, I think it's important. Did he let himself out? Yeah. Um, where would I know her friend? Uh, I don't know. She's a chef. Well, she sat next to you, Gabe. My friend Tara. Yeah, she, yeah, she's I know. a chef. So she's um, she did she worked under what's that blonde chef on that? Ah, uh, I don't know. She's one of those top chefs. But Tara worked under her, and now she does it on her own for all these big people. But she was at that event cooking. Wow, oh, amazing. Um, I don't know her offhand. She sounds amazing. Randy's throwing a rock like his ball. No, I bounced to it. He didn't throw it. Let that cook slowly. That's so good to go. Bring this dish together. Um, Plates? Yeah. Like, Gabriel, like, what plate should we use? Um, I mean, what, whatever. What kind of plates do you want? Um, something that's like a coupe style. Um, so, I mean, I have something like this. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you just want one, or do you want several? Course. We don't have art of plating branded plates. No, but these are these are Revel. I really like this this brand. Um, they have such beautiful porcelain plates. Find something, he's like, let me take everything out of it. <laughs> How far is this going? Well, now he's drinking wine, so.
I do not like their I feel like they're un they're undercooked. They're too ginormous. Don't get it out. Don't get it out. Oh, that was a he like tipped his head back. Like bottoms up. Okay. He's done that before. Professional, right? He's done, he's done a lot for his one year and two months old. Wow. Yeah, he's... Look how cute he is. Though. Oh my god. We're definitely having Lisa teach him French, babe. Look at <laughs> That's such good content. Drunk baby. He's like, yes. Wow, you're stumbling a little. He's had a run with a pen before. With a hoe? With a what? Oh, oh my god, you told me that. You told me that story. That's actually that's kind of scary. You gotta be careful. That in edibles, you can't, I mean, baby. That's like terrible. He can't find those. It was just that he, he opened the drawer and pulls it out. It wasn't like it was there. He literally goes, you know, there's a big pole. He's like, oh, this is a huge pole. the strongest one I have. It's the, it's the bedtime. It's the go to bed. Slept for four days. Not the blissy one. Oh, I haven't been time. Just go work. Yeah, it's like, you can't find the bottom. 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 He's gonna have a great time that day. Yeah. There's just so many cuts. I'm like, oh, yeah. thank God I don't have to do it. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. Okay. Sorry, there's only two plates. I know we were going to share earlier, but it's just one for me and one for Naisha. You can watch as he. Delish. Gabe just rolled his eyes. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say?
Because you don't trust that. I don't trust that. You got the glass. Yeah. I know, I'm like, you got the glass. made up on the That's it, we don't have any other plates. Alright, we're sharing family style, one plate, one fork, pass it to here. the left. <laughs> Ruth, come here. Chives from the garden. Continue the love dialogue here. Funny because he was bombarded by everyone. We're like, we don't really take photos of people. Oh, this is a, he's a meme. Let's yeah. take a photo with him. He's very gracious. Like everyone's bombarding him, and then he'd be like, hold on, he'd take a photo. And then he'd be back in, and back and forth, and back and forth. So yeah. that's kind of cool. Thing. Salud. You got it? Yep. Got it. 